Last week we looked at the path a player took and saying that we know each position along the path, we were able to calculate the total distance traveled. Total distance traveled. But this week we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to calculate the velocity. So let's say I know these positions. This is going to be x0, x1, x2, etc. And then we know the time that the player was at each position. So this will be t0, and then t1, and then t2, and then etc. So we can calculate the velocity at each position along this path. For example, say in this section the player was moving faster, and then in this section, maybe you slow down to turn around and so on. Why would we want to calculate the path? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, one common one is, say, for example, you import some animation data. You have an animator who animates a character, maybe in a cutscene or something, and they're running in a certain path. And you need the velocity data so that you can do something else with it. And so the animator will export positions maybe 30 times per second or something like that along this path and then it's your job to go and calculate the velocity so that you can use it in something else. Another common example is say you're making a multiplayer game and your client knows the previous position of a of another player in the game somewhere over there and he wants to kind of figure out where he's going to be in the future so he can do some prediction well, that in involves the uh, same process we're doing here to calculate the velocity. So those are just a few examples why you would want this. So, um, so we're going to look at what velocity is. Velocity is the change in a position x over the change in time it takes to get from the old position to the new position. And this delta, just in case you haven't been paying attention to uh, some of the earlier videos, this delta just means change. So velocity is a change in time divided by a change in, I'm sorry, a change in position divided by a change in time. Which makes sense uh, because if you are going very fast, then your position is changing a lot over a certain period of time. If you're going slow, your position isn't changing as much. So let's do the mathematics here. We just take our x1 minus x0 and divide it by t1 minus t0 to get the average velocity between these two points. And let's say that Let's say that the player went maybe a quarter of a meter, 0.25 meters in that time. And the, let's say the amount of time, just you know, so we have nice round numbers, is 0.25 meters. Very good. And that uh, 0.25 seconds. So that comes out to be about one meter per second. 0.25 divided by 0.25 is one. So good, now we're going to do the same thing we did in the previous video, and we're going to try and get more accurate by reducing the time step. Here we're looking at the 0.25 seconds that the player took to go from here to here, but we want more accuracy and we can get more accuracy. So we're going to ask that animator to export the animation at a higher frame rate. So that means that there will be more points of data I'm drawing in a little pink, maybe pink was a bad color here, it's pink and this orange are kind of the same color but so there'll be more points of data where there weren't before so now we can calculate a, um, a newer a new and more accurate uh, velocity so let's let's pretend we're calculating the velocity between these two points and we're going to get super accurate here, 0.001 meters in 0.001 seconds. Uh, and you're going to get again 1 meter per second. 
which again, just like last video, uh, they look like the same number, but if you're using real data, then you're going to get a more, more exact figure. So for example, he might have gone 0.0011 meters in those 0.001 seconds, and then you would have 1.1 meters per second, I think. Yes. So um, now we can continue, and we can make it more and more and more accurate. We can, in fact, make it infinitely accurate so that our time step is infinitely small. And you remember what happened to our, velocity, to our um, delta t when we made it infinitely small in our previous video. It became a dt. It became an infinitesimal dt. It's a d. Oh, man. And same thing because we cannot go as far in a in an infinitely small amount of time, so we have to turn our uh, delta x into an infinitesimal as well. So we get dx over dt. And this is, this is called a derivative. That is called a derivative. It is an instantaneous amount of time, and it's the distance you went in that instantaneous amount of time. So it's an instantaneous distance over an instantaneous time. We're talking about instantaneous velocity. And this is really important. Instantaneous velocity. This is very important because until now we've been examining um, average velocities, velocities over a certain time step. But this instantaneous velocity that we're getting using a, a, an infinitesimally small time step is infinitely accurate. You cannot get more accurate than this infinite instantaneous velocity. Now, I know what you're thinking. In order to get this instantaneous velocity, we have to have an infinitesimally small time step, which means we have to output an infinite number of points in our path in order to calculate it. And our animator, there's no way our animator can export an infinite number of points for us to calculate. Yes, that is true. And the problem here is that computers are discrete. Computers do everything in, in discrete time steps. Um, there's really no way for computers to calculate this. But that's okay, because we're learning. We're learning the instantaneous and the infinitesimal, because there will be some amazing, amazing, I promise you, applications later on of the instantaneous uh, versions of these functions. So, uh, very good. No code section for this video next week. We are going to explore more our new tools of, of derivatives and integrals, and, and we're going to see the big picture of how they all fit together. See you next week.